please welcome Georgia's, Georgia's Congresswoman from the 6th District, Lucy McBath. Good evening, HRC. I am so excited to be here with you this evening, and thank you so very much for inviting me. I want to especially thank everyone who has put in such hard work to make this event happen. And that will include Rebecca, Percy, the Board of Governors and local steering members, and additionally, National Directors Edie, Charlie, and Matt for the important work that you continue to do. It is truly so beautiful to see so many committed people tirelessly dedicated to this cause. And I know that to be this dedicated to a cause, you most certainly have a story to tell. We all have unique experiences and stories to tell. As a woman of color, I know what it feels like to be treated differently because of who you are. I know the pain and doubt caused by discrimination. And while we all have different stories, we are all here in this room for the very same reason. We are here because we have seen or experienced inequality, and then we stood up to do something about it. My story is one of a normal mom living in Marietta, Georgia. I worked for over 30 years as a Delta flight attendant. <laughs> that must be my table over there. And I dedicated my life to being a mother to my son, Jordan Davis. Jordan was one of those kids who almost always had a smile on his face. He was a, a leader among his friends, and he would walk into a room and elicit a smile from everyone before leaving. I loved nothing more than being labeled <laughs> the official skate mom of Jordan's friends. Because almost weekly, Jordan would pile all of his friends into our car, and we would take a trip to the skating rink. And I was like, so excited for the moments in life that every parent cherishes. I was ready to send my son off to prom, then to college, and then to see all the things that he would do and be in life. Then on November 23, 2012, I received that phone call that I wish no other parent ever receives. I learned that a man felt intimidated by my son and his friends playing music in their car. So this man, he fired 10 bullets into the car, killing my son, and simply drove away. And when I heard those words, that Jordan had been murdered, I fell to the floor and my world went black. I spent months and months on my knees in prayer, in the book of Esther, working hard to find my new sense of normal. But after Jordan was murdered, I didn't stop being his mom. I am still his mother. And almost overnight, I went from just a Marietta mom to a mother on a mission. So at that point in my life, I had never given a speech. I had never given remarks. 
I had never spoken before such a large audience before. But I started asking those hard questions and demanding answers. How did this happen to my child? And why was everyone so silent? I began working for Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America, and I learned, I learned that about 100 Americans each and every day are dying in this country. They are dying to gun violence. And I traveled the country speaking out to our local elected officials, state legislators, and yes, I even tested testify before our United States Congress because I understood that we need immediate action on gun violence prevention. I demanded action in the wake of a tragic shooting that was almost happening every single day in this country. And I remember the horrific shooting at Pulse nightclub in Florida. I remember where I was and what I was doing that very day. And I saw many in the LGBTQ community, many people of color who lost their lives in one of the safest places that they had ever known. And after the shooting in Parkland, Florida, I remember, remember watching those children the same age as my son Jordan running out of that school to save their lives. And it felt like our leaders were starting to maybe consider gun safety measures. I remember the day that President Trump gathered legislators together. I was watching this on television. And he even mentioned, you know, looking into potential solutions to gun violence in this country. And he said, you don't need to be afraid of the NRA. But within 24 hours, he flipped. He flipped because the NRA reminded him that they had spent millions of dollars getting him elected. And they do have a seat at the White House. They have a seat at the table. And that is when I knew that for my son, for my community, and for my country, I had to stand up to do more. If our, curtain, if our curtain le current leaders would not pass common sense gun safety reforms, it was time that we had to stand up and do it ourselves. So I, a Marietta mom who loves her child more than anything in this world, declared my run for the United States Congress. And I must say, I was running against a woman who just one year before won the most expensive house race in American history. I had people tell me that I wouldn't win because of the district, that I wouldn't win because of the politics, and most definitely, I wouldn't win because I was a black woman but because I told my story, the story of a mom who will stop at nothing to keep our children and our community safe. Because I met my constituents on their porches, in their doorsteps, and explained that we have to demand more from our elected officials. Because of the endorsement of HRC and the love, the energy, the time and support that I've received from many of you in this room, Karen Handel did not even serve one full term in Congress. Karen Handel showed us who she really is. She led the way on the atrocious child separation policy at our border and was still actively working to tear down and undermine the L 
LGBTQ community. But the love that I have for my son and for you is what drives me to stand up to people like Karen Handel. The fierce instinct of a mother is why I pledge to you that I will not let anyone, anyone else with an extreme and dangerous view take this seat back from Georgia 6. Now let me be honest with you. Let me be honest. They're coming after me. They are coming after me as we expected they would. But I ain't scared. I already have two opponents. And national Republicans are actually harassing my family. They sent an unsolicited package to my mother-in-law in Tennessee. And one of them even got so mad, mad at me, that he said on a radio show that he wanted to knock me back into the kitchen. To which I laugh at because cooking is something that I hardly ever do and know how to do. <laughs> so our opponents are mad because I came to D.C. and I got directly to work. The House passed the first gun safety bill in over decades. And we have passed landmark campaign finance reform. And most recently, I am honored to say that I have co-sponsored as a member of the House Judiciary Committee. I am proud to have voted for the Equality Act this very week. <laughs> and we passed it on the House floor. A bill that you have been fighting on for many, many years, which will amend the Civil Rights Act to, pro to protect the LBGTQ individuals. Because we have all been created equal. And under the Constitution, we all deserve to live equally in this country without discrimination. And in closing, I just want to say, times such as these, at times such as these, we must stand up and fight back. We have no other option. And I will continue to fight for you. I will continue to fight for you. I will continue to fight for you. And I will continue to fight for you. I will fight for every person in this room, because that is what democracy means. And I know that as long as we continue to support one another, that love will always win. But I am charging you to stand up. Stand up tall. Fight back. Our future depends on it. Democracy depends on it. You deserve it. I deserve it. Our futures deserve it. Now get to work.